Good afternoon, pre-calculus students. So welcome to Mr. Chen's master class. So today I want to talk about that 4.3, which is 5.3 from the pre-cal textbook. And also I'm going to show you some of the proof regarding some of the basic identity. So you'll be seeing that in a minute. Okay, so back to the template. So here's what we got. So right triangle trigonometry. So before we prove that the uh, co-function identity, so one thing I just want to show that previous sections for derive the even and the odd identity. Okay, so for the even odd identity, so one thing that we notice cosine of theta is the same as cosine of negative theta, and then secant of theta is the same as secant of negative theta. So let's put in theta in the first quadrant and then negative theta in the second quadrant. And then let's put in the ratio for those adjacent opposite hypotenuse. So let's say this one is x, y, r. This one is also x, but it's negative y down here for the opposite, and then r. So you maybe notice that. So what we got for cosine of theta is the same as what? x over r. And then what about cosine of negative theta for this triangle? It's also considered x over r. Uh, x over r, not x over y. So basically for the even identity, so it's pretty easy to prove. You just need to show the same ratio. So secant identity, same thing. So r over x is the same as r over x. And now what about for the odd function? So like sine of negative theta, it's the same as negative sine of theta. So for sine of negative theta, the ratio is negative y over r. And then sine of theta, which is what? Opposite over hypotenuse, so y over r. But don't forget to bring down the negative. Okay? So it's pretty easy to prove those odd even function identity. And then what about for cosecant cotangent? You can use the same kind of the ratio x, y, r to prove those identity. Okay, so now back to the template for 4.3. So derive the cofunction identity. So what are the cofunction identity? So for the cofunction identity, you're showing that so cosine of theta is the same as what sine of 90 minus theta, or it could be considered sine of pi minus theta. So the way to show this kind of identity true, so we want to prove that the right hand side, because the right hand side that looks a little bit more complicated. So this one, try to expand it out by using the sum and difference identity, things that you learn from trig. So what we got is sine of pi cosine of theta minus cosine of pi times sine of theta. So one thing that we notice sine of pi, it's considered zero. So zero times cosine of theta, so it just got canceled. So minus cosine of pi, sine of theta, what's cosine of pi? That's negative one times sine of theta. So negative, negative, positive. Uh, one thing, just want to make sure that this one is correct. Oh, you know what? It's 90, not pi. Pi over 2. Okay, so I expanded wrong with the radian. So one more time, let's start it over with this identity. Again, it's a sum and a difference of sine. So it's a difference of sine. So sine of pi over 2. Cosine of theta minus sine of theta, and then cosine of pi over 2. So one thing that we notice, sine of pi over 2 is 1, using the unit circle, times cosine of theta. And then sine of theta, times cosine of pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this one got canceled. So what's left here? It's just cosine of theta. Proof. The same identity. And then what about for tangent? So tangent of theta, so that's the same as what? Cotangent of pi over 2 minus theta. So try to expand it out using the cotangent property. So which is the reciprocals for the difference of tangent. It's like tangent A minus tangent B over 1 minus tangent of A, tangent of B. So for cotangent, this one is just like a reciprocals, <laughs> excuse me, just the reciprocals of this. So this one is just like 1 minus tangent of pi over 2, tangent of theta, all over 
tangent of pi over 2 minus tangent of theta. So tangent of pi over 2, that's 1. So it's 1 minus tangent of theta. And denominator, it's also consider tangent of pi over 2. Well, wait a minute. Tangent of pi over 2 is actually undefined. We cannot use this type of identity. So we want to expand it out with the with the sine and cosine identity. So tangent of pi over 2, it's sine over cosine. So that would be undefined. You cannot do that. So the way to prove this, so just rewrite it as cosine over sine. And then using the sum and difference to expand it. So instead of doing that way, tangent of a minus b. So cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, so it's cosine of pi over 2, cosine of theta, plus, let's expand it, cosine of pi over 2, cosine of theta, plus sine of pi over 2, sine of theta. And then for sine, so sine of pi over 2, cosine of theta, minus cosine of pi over 2, and then sine of theta. So cosine of pi over 2, that's 0. This one got canceled. So sine of pi over 2, that's 1. So we got sine of theta. And then over here, so sine of pi over 2, that's 1. 1 times cosine of theta, that's cosine of theta. And this one, cosine of pi over 2, that's 0. Cancel. So what's left here? It's just sine over cosine. What's sine over cosine? Which is what? Tangent. The same identity. Okay, so now let's see what else that we need to derive right here. The reciprocal and the quotient identity. Okay, so reciprocal. So what we notice that secant is just the same as 1 over cosine of theta. And then cosecant is the same as 1 over sine theta. Well, this way you can just find out the ratios. So secant of theta in terms of x, y, r. So this one is r over x. So this one, cosine of theta, it's x over r. Once you take your reciprocal, they're exactly the same. And then cosecant of theta, it's r over y. So that equals 1 over y over r. Take the reciprocal, eventually it's going to be the same ratio. So those are pretty straightforward. Quotient identity, pretty much you can use the exact same thing. So tangent of theta, it's the same as sine over cosine. Again, plug in that x, y, r. So tangent of theta, which is y over x. So sine theta, y over r, cosine of theta, x over r. So the r got canceled, so we got y over x. And what about the Pythagorean identity? So that's something I already showed you that in trick last year, if you guys do remember that. So please refer to another video. So there's another part that showing the Pythagorean identity for the proof. Okay, so I'll just do the basic one, cosine square of theta plus sine square of theta. So that equals r squared, or 1. So again, just make the triangle in the first quadrant. So x, y, r. So here's theta. So cosine of theta, which is what? x over r. And then square the whole quantity. So sine of theta, y over r, quantity squared. So now we're not sure whether that's 1 or not. But once you combine them, so x squared plus y squared, so that equals r squared. So what's r squared here? Using the Pythagorean theorem, it's the same as what? x squared plus y squared. So it's 1. Okay, so now let's see what else. So find the value of cosecant of x, tangent of x, for 0, it's less than k, it's less than 5, trigonometric function given a right triangle. Okay, so here's what we found. So basically this one eventually is going to be written in terms of k. So cosecant of x, so that would be considered 5 over 
Well, in order to find out this value using the Pythagorean theorem, so square root of 5 squared minus k squared, or just like square root of 25 minus k squared. And then rationalize it, so it's 5 times square root of 25 minus k squared over 25 minus k squared. And then for tangent of x, opposite over adjacent, or y over x, so square root of 25 minus k squared over k. Transform one side of the equation into another, prove the identity. Okay, so this one we just want to show that the left side is the same as the right hand side. So whatever the one that looks more complicated, that's the one you always want to verify. Okay, so let me take this one to the new page. Again, something wrong with this one. Snipping. Okay, so for the first one, so obviously, so you want to verify the uh, left-hand side because that looks more complicated. Same denominator, combine them. So 1 minus cosine square of x over sine square of x. So the first one is actually pretty straightforward. So 1 minus cosine square of x using an identity, so sine square of x. Over sine square of x, so then that's 1. Proof. And then for this one, using that, the difference of 2 squares, so we got sine square of x minus cosine square of x times sine square of x plus cosine square of x. So this one basically that turns out to be 1. So what's left here? Just sine square of x minus cosine square of x. And then using that the Pythagorean identity. So this one we got 1 minus cosine square of x. Okay. Minus cosine square of x. So it's 1 minus 2 cosine square of x. Proof. Same as the run on the right hand side. And then what about for C? So C, this one is similar. So it looks like this one, we want to verify the left-hand side. So multiply it out, difference of two squares. And then secant square of x minus 1, which is the same as tangent square of x. Pythagorean identity. So pretty easy to prove. And now what about number 6? So sine square of x equals 1 over 16. What's the value of 2 minus cotangent square of x? So again, this one is given. So one thing that we notice, so cotangents, which is consider cosine over sine. Okay, cosine over sine. And then you try to solve for sine of x here. So this one will give you 1 over, 1 over 4. Okay. So you might be wondering plus minus, but since we're taking the square root of this, we'll just take the positive, 1, 4. And then, so we got 2 minus cotangent. Okay, so sine of x is 1, 4. So opposite over hypotenuse. So that means the adjacent would be considered root 16 minus 1. So it's root 15. So 2 minus cotangent square of x. So cotangent is considered adjacent over hypotenuse. So root, well, cotangent is actually considered adjacent over opposite, so it's root 15. So root 15 quantity squared. So 2 minus 15. So this one will be considered negative 15. Okay. And now the rest of this. Evaluate. Do not use a calculator. Okay, so let me take that number seven to the new page. So it's about using the co-function identity. Okay, so let's put it right here. So sine of 20 plus uh, sine square of 20 plus sine square of 70. Okay, start with that one first. So one thing that we notice, sine of 20, is the same as cosine of 70. Because the cofunction property, or the identity, again, sine of theta, 
is the same as cosine of 90 minus theta. So basically this one is just replace that by cosine of 70 quantity square, not 72, 70. And then plus sine square of 70. So what is this? Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean identity. So it's one. And then for the tangent as well. So tangent of 36, cotangent of 54. So cotangent of 54, which is the same as tangent of 36. So tangent over tangent, just one. Secant of 3 pi over 8, sine of pi over 8. Okay, so this one, so basically convert that to one of the, the exact functions. So let's convert that secant to cosecant. So secant of 3 pi over 8, it's the same as cosecant of Again, using the co-function, pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 8. So 4 pi over 8 minus 3 pi over 8, which is what? Pi over 8. And then times sine of pi over 8. So it's 1 over sine of pi over 8 times sine of pi over 8. So just 1. Okay, so it's pretty basic. And then what about for number eight? That one is quite similar. So secant of quantity 90 minus t equals three over one, if that the denominator is not shown. So secant, this one tells you that the ratios of what? Cosecant of t. So that means cosecant, it's considered three. Again, cofunction property or the cofunction identity. And then this one, so let's find out what that is. So evaluate, find the value. Okay, so take out sine of square of t first. So what's left here is sine of t plus 1 over sine of uh, t plus 1. So this one, reduce, reduce. So that means just want to evaluate sine square of t. Well, one thing that we notice, 1 over sine of t is 3. So that means for sine of t, it's considered 1 third using the reciprocal identity. So one third quantity square, which is what one nine, just like that. Okay, so now let's see what else. Things that remain here. Evaluate without using the calculator. So again, so convert that to the same kind of function with the same angle, so we can simplify it a little bit more. So that's something you want to think about it. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you, it's, um, okay, so number 11, it's also quite similar. So try to come up with that, the common either sine, either secant or cos, uh, secant or cosine, and then try to verify it, okay? Or you can just plug in a number, just find out exactly what that is for number 11. Okay, so number 10, let me just snip that one. Okay, so this one is all about finding the, kind of like the ratio. Yep. So given that sine of x, okay, so just like going back to what we did in trig. So it's given as opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over root 7. So that means adjacent can be founded by using the Pythagorean theorem. So square root of root 7 squared, so 7 minus one square minus one, so it's root six. So cosine of x, so then that'll be considered root six over root seven. Rationalize it, so root 42 over seven. And then tangent of x square, so then that'll be considered one over root six, opposite over adjacent quantity squared. So it's 1 over 6. Simple. Okay, so again, number 11, plug in a number and probably just rewrite it or try to factor. Factor by grouping or 
Yeah, it's easier to factor by grouping with the first three terms and the last three terms. But make sure that you need to rewrite it with the property or the reciprocals. So try to convert that as cosecant, I mean, uh, as cosine or secant. And then from there, you can just factor it. Okay, so number 12. So number 12, this one, it's a little bit tricky. So AB, so the segment, the bottom base, or the diameter of the semicircle, it's A. And then angle CAB, so angle CAB is theta. So where BC is tangent to the semicircle at point B. So that means this line segment, so it only touches the circle at one point, at that point B right there. And then from all the information we found, so we want to determine the length of CD, okay? So one thing that we notice, so this one, anytime that I deal with a circle or semicircle, so back to geometry, there's one of the proportionality theorem. It's called the tangent secant. So the tangent secant, so the formula for that, it's always considered the external of the secant segment, the external secant segment, it's that CD right here. So times secant, the entire segment, because secant that touches the semicircle at two point, one point, two points right here. So that equals the ratios of tangent square. So tangent, that would be this line segment here, CB square. So that means CD times CA, the entire secant segment. So that equals CB square. So in order to solve for CD, so what I did here, I divide both sides by CA. And also at the same time, I divided by AB. Because what we need to find out is that finding the, the length of CD in terms of the given segment A and the given angle, theta. So once I divide it, so what I got here is CB over CA, because CB originally is being squared, so the other CB, so I put it on top of AB. So CB over CA, what kind of ratio is that? CB over CA. So CB over CA, that's the ratios of opposite over hypotenuse, which is what, sine over theta. And then CB over AB, which is the ratios of tangent of theta. So sine of theta times tangent of theta, okay? So basically that gives you the, the ratio for CD. And then you might be wondering, what about for that, the other side, what happened with the AB? So eventually I multiply everything by AB on both sides. So what's AB? So AB is being labeled it as what? Segment A. Okay, so A times sine theta times tangent of theta. So that equals CB. So in terms of theta, so what's the slope of AC? So the slope of AC, what is that? Rise over the run. If that's CB over AB, what's the ratio? It's tangent of theta. So the slope in terms of theta, so just tangent of theta. Because that, if you count it, rise over the run. So CB over AB. So the ratio for that, tangent of theta, which is the slope. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have. So for 13, so another one that we need to show. So BC is the same as M over cotangent of alpha minus cotangent of beta. So this one with the overlapping right triangles. So let me take this one to the new page. Okay, so BC equals M over cotangent of alpha minus cotangent of beta. Okay, so one thing that we notice, so angles, elevation, CAB, right here. So this one is being labeled it as what, alpha? And then CDA is being labeled it as beta, okay, respectively. And let AD, right here, so that's considered M. Okay, so now let's find out. So let's find out that the ratios of cotangent of alpha. Well, what's cotangent of alpha? So in terms of the right triangle here, so cotangent of alpha is considered AB over CB. And then, excuse me, cotangent of beta 
So cotangent of beta is considered dB over CB. Adjacent over opposite. So once you combine all this together, again, M, it's just what? AD. Okay, so just rewrite it as AD. So once you combine them all together, so what we found here on the right-hand side, so N, rewrite it, just the right-hand side. So it's AD all over, putting that cotangent of alpha, so AB over CB, and then minus cotangent of beta, which is what, DB over CB, right? So once you combine them, so it's the same denominator. So what we found, it's AD over AB minus DB all over CB. Now, one thing that we notice, so AB, so what is that? AB, that consists with the sums of AD and DB. So AB, so just replace that with the segment addition postulate. So it's AD plus DB. And then guess what we can do with that? DB, positive DB minus DB, subtract. Okay, so one thing I just want to clarify here. Okay, so that part right there, the top, so M, which is what? AD, right? I put in AB right here. It's supposed to be AD. Okay, so it's all about the subtraction. So it's AD divided by this whole quantity. So that means you multiply by the reciprocal. So it's AD times CB over AD. And then eventually cross cancel. So what's left? Just BC. And that's what we have on the left hand side. All right, so it's a little bit tricky. So the things that it's all about the substitution with that, the ratio, the trig ratio, cotangent, adjacent over opposite, adjacent over opposite. So once you replace that using the segment addition postulate, so cancel out that DB, and then you're left with AD divided by the ratios of AD over CB. Take the reciprocal, cross cancel, so just BC. Okay, so now let's see what else. So the last one, simplify cosine of 180 minus X by using cofunction identity. So you might be wondering cofunction identity, cosine of 90 minus X. It's always what? The same as sine of x, right? Okay, so how do we use that, the cofunctions identity to simplify this whole thing? So one thing that we can do, we can always split it. So cosine of 180 is like 90 minus x plus 90. Okay, so just split it this way. And then let's say this one is just like alpha. Okay, so let 90 minus x be alpha. Okay, so expand it out first. Uh, you don't need to set it like alpha, just expand it out using the, the sum of cosine. So we got cosine of 90 minus x times cosine of 90 and then minus sine of 90 minus x. So times sine of 90. So cosine of 90, that's zero. 0 times this whole thing, 0. And then sine of 90, that's 1. So 1 times this sine of 90 minus x. So negative sine of 90 minus x. And then from here, so sine of 90 minus x is the same as cosine of x. So negative cosine of x using the cofunction identity. So this part right here is just the same as negative cosine of x. So again, what I did here, I just split that 180 into 90 plus 90. So one of those 90s, I put it with 90 minus x. So I can use that as a cofunction. And then the other 90, so just separate it out. 
And by the time you expand it using the sum of cosine identity, and then you'll find out this one got canceled, sine of 90 becomes 1. So what's left is just negative sine of quantity 90 minus x. And then using the cofunction identity, cosine of x times negative 1. So negative cosine of x. Okay, so again, make sure that you guys rewind and fast forward to the part of the lesson in case that you're wondering how I come up with those type of step. Okay, so making sure that you guys understand the process, especially the way that I prove those identity, the even odd functions, Pythagorean, what else? Uh, the ratios, the quotients, and also the cofunction identity. Okay? So thank you for watching the third part of the video for this chapter. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great one.